All right. <clears throat> Audio checking all that good stuff. Uh, Jerry Diamond, How to Get Out of Babylon. We interrupt this program for special news. We're reading a book called We Interrupt This Program. All right. Um, this section is Jack Frost Part 1. The bus pulled up in front of the Horn home with a belch of wood smoke and a sigh of brakes. Anne stepped down and behind her came an older man in a blanket lined denim coat and a younger man in a bright yellow Gore-Tex jacket. John met them at the gate, gave his wife a welcome home kiss, then turned to the two men. He stuck his hand out to the older one and said, Howdy, Dr. Martin. Good to see you again. The man shook hands and then turned towards the younger man and said, This is Adam Kincaid. He's Nick Smith's graduate assistant come out to check on the wheat and oat plantings you put in for him. Nick's been feeling a little puny these last few days. John shook his hand as well and said, Y'all come into the house. Supper's about ready. We had a hog butcher in yesterday, so the girls have made up a mighty pot of pork, stew, and cornbread tonight. As they stepped up on the porch, Dr. Barton said, Well, it's been good weather for butchering with the snow this week. Anne's been telling me about your homestead. Have you found pasturing the hogs makes a difference in your feed cost? Yes, John replied, most definitely. Might not work for a large operation for, for the two we raise every year. Putting them out on pasture saves me about 15 to 20 percent on feed and makes a major difference in the taste of the meat. Needed to get them away from, get them put away though since they've been, they'd be burning calories to stay warm rather than putting on weight with the weather being the way it is. They entered the house and the t men put down their overnight bags. John asked, will y'all be staying this weekend like last time? Dr. Mitchell Martin, forage expert for the University of Florida, replied, Nope, not this time. We'll get out early and make our measurements and recordings, and the bus will be back for us about noon. We've got three more test areas besides yours to work this weekend, and that blizzard freezing Texas at the moment is expected to reach here by Sunday sometime. Houston's received six inches of snow already. If we get half that, we won't be able to make many of our measurements, so we're going to have to hit it at a run. Well, I hope you'll at least stay for lunch then. Heather's got a veritable cauldron of pintos slow cooking on the wood stove. Dr. Martin nodded, and he and Adam smiled. Then he said, well, we wouldn't want to miss out on that. Do you breed your own hogs or buy feeder pigs? No, John replied, we've always bought feeders. With our present circumstances, it might not be a bad idea to breed our own, but the two we butchered were both castrated males, so we'd have to come up with breeding stock from somewhere else. The only thing we breed here are goats and chickens. Lisa stuck her head out the kitchen door and said, Everyone come to the table. Dinner is ready. Anne smiled. There's nothing like coming home from a cold day at work to a hot meal. John frowned at this and asked, Aren't they heating the buildings on campus? His wife replied, In a manner of speaking, fuel is so short that there's a mandatory 68 degree maximum for office areas. And don't even think about bringing your own electric heater. That might be okay for some, but the, for some, but the old buildings... We're in our leak badly, leak heat badly. I'm taking my wool socks and leggings with me come Monday. As everyone sat to the table, Adam said, that's a good idea. It's going to be cold this winter. The NOAA, the NOAA National Ocean and Air, Not Air Atmosphere Association, I receive predict will very likely go below zero, at least down to Ocala sometime in December or January. There's going to be a serious crisis in heating oil this winter in the northern states. Maybe natural gas as well. They may have to reduce the maximum heating temperature even more before it's over. I've been toying with the idea of building a stove to burn old journals to heat the lab. Dr. Martin chuckled. Well, there's a thought. Got enough old paper down in the basement to heat our building for the next couple of years, I think. John gave the grace, then Lisa began passing around the cornbread as Heather ladled out the stew. No one spoke much at first except for Adam, who said, This is very good. It's been months since I've had a home-cooked meal. Heather, Lisa, Melinda, and Brittany all smiled at this, and Lisa said, Thank you. We're glad you like it. Adam continued, I was never much of a cook, I'm afraid. You're a, when you're a grad student, there never seems to be enough time to cook a full meal anyways. I have to wait to go home. I mean, I had to wait to go home for real food. Melinda asked, Where are you from, Adam? A troubled look crossed the young man's face. Baltimore. 
Oh, Melinda replied, I see, and looked down. Conversation lagged for a time, then John asked Adam, You said you get weather reports from NOAA. What are they predicting is going to happen this winter? According to my almanac, our average first frost date isn't even for another two days, and we've had an ice storm and snow already. Five minutes. All right. Jack Frost. Nah, I'm going to load it. What the heck? 